Alright, hello folks, and thank you for joining me. Um, first off, now I have a lot to cover here in this video. First off, let me apologize for the abrupt ending on the last reading of the Manly P. Hall, and uh, also, I guess, my frustration with it towards the end. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. The, uh, I got a phone call, emergency phone call, that couldn't be ignored, and I just had to shut off. And uh, so, um, on that um, was why it ended as it did, and I'm, at, you know, the the phone call can be heard partly as I received it, um, and a friend had hurt themselves, and I had to uh, go take them to the emergency room. The okay, so this video is not. This will finish out the symbolism part of the Bimbin or Isis table for the reading in the Manly P. Hall, and then we'll move on to the next section for part 20, 21. It'll be part 21 of the reading. Um, this will be entitled something else uh, regarding this, this subject. Um, now, I have, I've been going through this in my head for probably the last, at least the last 24 hours of how I was going to do this and explain this, and basically uh, I know I made when I first opened this channel. I made the one, the one uh, video, and I did say I would, I would, you know, do my best to read, you know, just read the content. Okay, and I did real good for the first books because they were about Freemasonry and and the actual, um, you know, operations of the lodges, the explanation of of different subjects like the keys and other things uh, that's all straightforward stuff there's uh, most of that is true and I'll show you the origins of that in a minute um, and where that come from and the true meaning of Freemasonry this kind of video is, is uh, if I can get my dialogue straight because I've had so much I want to say and it's hard to keep it all in, in order in your head you know and 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 so but first off I mean I, I guess we're going to do this. This is going to be like a, a style of the Heliophant reviews that I'm doing on my Mind Crime channel. Uh, Mind Crime 1994. For those who don't know, that is my other and original, well, my second channel on YouTube. My original channel on YouTube actually wasn't uh, a knowledge channel at all. It was just a YouTube person channel. And, and then I uh, uh, got into other things on the internet uh, of discovering what a great tool it was um, I actually was anti-technology most of my life and I never even touched the internet or anything like that until 2003 uh, but anyway uh, so we're going to do this heliophant style to prove my points not just what I'm saying I've tried to explain this to many people and I get a lot of comments in my earlier readings uh, especially on this Manly P. Hall. Uh, the reason I'm harsh and started right in on the Manly P. Hall as far as dissecting it stuff because it drives me nuts because Manly P. Hall is one of the infiltrators of, free ma of true Freemasonry or f true Masonry. Um, the, you know, uh, it is people like him. Okay, Basically, nowadays you got a lot of people out there and part of the reason I built this channel Okay, was basically mainly directed at the Blue Lodge members, your everyday Masons that are out here in the workforce, and uh, part just you know in the first three uh, degrees of, of Freemasonry, and especially directed if you were uh, a Christian of any type, whether you're a Churchianity Christian <laughs> or if you're actually trying to follow the way of Christ. Um, which yes are two separate things we're not going to get into that here uh, I have actually pointed some of that out in some of my readings that's kind of the point in some of all this too and besides on my other channel there's plenty of videos to watch including the Heliophant movie uh, I Pet Goat 2 reviews which uh, I in the process of also divulge many bits of information to the people um, so this is to explain what the purpose again of this channel is for okay it's pointed towards 
the people just getting into masonry or that want to know about true masonry and like I started to say you have a lot of people out there that are relating masonry with everything that's going wrong in the world <laughs> and then of course taking it to the other degree because of the infiltrators mixing their materials in with Freemasonry materials and the true uh, purpose of Freemasonry you have other people that believe Freemason or Masons and Freemasonry altogether is just completely satanic and and evil etc etc um, this is the problem this is why I'm so harsh on people like Manly P. Hall because he was one of the people who infiltrated this deception into the true Freemasonic uh, tradition okay of which basic tradition of Freemasonic was never supposed to be changed that was part of the rules and if you anybody who's listened to you know been with me from the beginning of this channel I have read these books in a certain order for a certain reason uh, building up to this point obviously I, I reckon and uh, in the first manuals that we read it talks about how not to change the traditions of Freemasonry and there's a reason for that to hold true to the true origins and knowledge okay and not let it be corrupted okay at this point let me interject as well I uh, know a lot of people coming here are atheists okay and what you're looking for here I don't know but let it be known that also as tradition one of, and, and it is actually the only prerequisite uh, to getting into a Masonic Lodge is you have to believe in deity it doesn't specify what religion or anything but you have to believe in a God a creator God okay uh, to even be considered or invited into a, a uh, lodge so what you're looking for here is basically mystery Babylon type stuff and that's what you're getting from stuff like Manly P. Hall and then you get mad at me when I correct the deception that they have infiltrated through their works and, they, and just like any Satanist Satanists Satanist aren't your little witches out there practicing shit and stuff like I mean sure they're Satanists too but the true Satanist you would never know was a Satanist you could meet them face to face you could work with them you could be around them for a long time for many years and never know not have a clue because of, by all outward appearances they would be intelligent, uh, successful, <laughs> successful, and um, you know competent and, and and you know everything good would show on the surface. Uh, they would do lots of philanthropical works, you know, charities and this and that, and uh, that's what they do they do that and they get into offices in high places and places of uh, power and stuff so they can act the true servants of Lucifer are that's what that's what it goes on and I'll, I'll go I don't recommend movies much but if you want to know how the world really works and what's really true the best example that Hollywood has ever put out is a movie called The Devil's Advocate. That's how the world works, and that's whose world this is, okay, for a time. So, getting back to the point, the atheists, you're coming here, and then you want to chew on me and try to insult me and and uh, troll on me uh, because you don't like the way I'm reading stuff, or you don't like my commenting and interjections, and then of course it's all jump on Jesus bandwagon because that's you know real popular nowadays anything to destroy uh, Jesus and um, people that have been with my channel that can obviously even look at my channel and see my website reference and everything uh, I'm not a Christian I do not believe in religion I know what religion is I know what it was created for and who created it <laughs> um, I am a Gnostic and that is how you say it you are Gnostic Gnosticism it is not agnostic as some people say or agnostic or and it and Gnostics 
know there is a creator. Okay? And the key word there is know. And it's through experience. And as far as my personal experiences, we're not going to get into that here. People that have been with this channel for a while know me well enough by watching my other channels videos and, and the personal videos that I put out throughout time. Some of them have been taken back down because they were they were time significant or whatever. But I mean it takes time. I've been on this, you know, YouTube thing for a little while doing all different kinds of stuff. You know, was on the MySpace thing, you know. Been uh, basically on the you know, since the whole Mo, you know, a big majority, big chunk of people start waking up after 9-1-1 because of the obviousness of the 9-11, and, uh, which was intentional. <laughs> and, and so there was a big bandwagon, a big movement started, and that motivation, you know, uh, but a lot of us are kind of older than that, you know, some, uh, a lot of us, some of us have, you know, we woke up long before 9-11 through other means and other ways in our lives and our life experiences and our, our journeys. And, um, you know, so I've gone through the progression of learning how to use the tool, uh, the internet as a tool since, like I said, 2003. Now, the, to this tool here, okay, Atheist, back to you for real quick. The point is, I don't know what you're doing here. Okay, this is a free Masonic channel. If you're interested in, in true Masonic information and knowledge, um, you, you have to believe in a God. Okay, uh, so you shouldn't be here if you don't believe in a God. And then, as far as the people who get pissed off when I point out that where these certain uh, infiltrators have mixed their mystery Babylon in with Freemasonry, uh, sorry for you if you don't like it you know this is the truth this is why I built this channel and I use their own works to do so and this is just getting ramped up I didn't really know when I first built this channel it was going to go this way and my first video where I introduced this channel and then on into the first second third books etc etc clear on through the first dozen books it was all about just reading the book as it is and it was those all books were all about Freemasonry and the lodges and the operations and the inside levels, degrees, all the you know details of Freemasonry itself. But when I started reading, I knew I was opening a bag of worms when I started reading this book, um, because I already knew who Manly P. Hall was. I already know who uh, Albert Pike is. I already know who Madame Belasky is. I, Belasky. I never can pronounce that Russian uh, anyway uh, or Crowley uh, or you know Kircher uh, certain uh, certain individuals throughout history have had certain alignments okay everybody has certain alignments and yes let's get to this real quick this is what I was reading in part 20 is the bin bean table or bin bind table yes it can be pronounced either way if you're from the UK and you don't pronounce things the way I do sorry don't need to come in here and try to tell me how to pronounce it I've already you know I've already told people before okay I'm not no Ivy League educated person I am a self educated man I am the free mason is a free builder that's what a mason is is a builder and the free stands for free man meaning a sovereign man a man who knows his rights are given to him by God and cannot be taken away by another man this is not to be confused with what Freemasonry has been corrupted to be nowadays about so-called apotheosis becoming a God yourself this is not true it is a lie. It is not possible in this life. Okay. And furthermore, it is not the purpose of us being here. We, none of us, no matter what your religion or belief or conception or ideology, ideology, uh, level of intelligence or level of ignorance, none of us are here to learn to become gods. Okay. Sorry to burst your bubbles, but that's a man egotistical thing, and I'm actually I'm not going to go. I, I'm not going to get into that here either because that's sidetrack us. But that's the point. I mean, that is the truth. 
accept it or not it doesn't matter and when we're talking creator we're talking about the creator of the heavens and earth of the universes the dimensions of this whole matrix of constructs okay that creator we're not talking about aliens okay and we're not talking about uh mythies or and John or or you know whatever Pleiades and all these other you know creating by manipulating genetic pe uh, genetic structures or terraforming planets or this and that that is not a creator God okay that is not the definition of God or creator deity okay uh so and we're not going to get into those explanations either here i'll make another video on that i've actually if you watch some of the videos on my other channel and listen to the zephs on this channel as well and and other things then you would understand these things that i'm stressing now so let's get back to the point manly p hall it's what they do okay albert pike it's what they've done okay these are the schools just like Aleister Crowley they are Luciferian doctrine people they are they are into the occult and the magic and the whole <coughs> excuse me mm, the whole uh, apotheosis thing and they are the ones who have interjected this they basically infiltrated okay Freemasonry as it was as even as the revamped version is that the Sinclairs uh, started, which was necessary and was still a different school than it is today. This latest, uh, in the 19th and 20th centuries, uh, 18 and 1900s in other words, uh, was infiltrated by people like Albert Pike and Manley P. Hall, and they mixed m the doctrine of Mystery Babylon okay and sun worship and other Egyptian uh, and even older uh, theologies ideologies mythologies into the free Masonic works and uh, into their works okay mixed with knowledge from the free mas free Masonic uh, histories like Euclid uh, Aristotle Plato all these actual true ancient scholars who were not aligned with the evil side they were not aligned with Lucifer that I know of okay and I'm not going to get into that it's not real there's you can see from their works kind of their alignment you know uh, well yeah, I, mean, I say kind of I mean you can see from their works their alignment that's the whole kind of the whole point of this and you know, I'm showing you their works and what they have done okay and what the original idea of Freemasonry and what the Blue Lodge members when they're first initiated into the Lodge actually are starting the path on okay is the true Freemasonry knowledge of the tradition okay but then when you get past when you finally get your masters or your you know uh, yeah, you know, your third degree, and then you get to go on further, and and you start delving into the Freemasonic works, and actually, if you haven't already, I mean, by that point, some people already have, but I mean, basically, you start reading the literature put out under the Freemasonic flag, or, you know, shield, or whatever, symbol, you have these infiltrators like this, who have, they became Freemasons, they were smart men, they were intelligent men, and they use that intelligence to manipulate others and also furtherance another corruption. It's just like religion being corruption. Okay? Well, this was the corruption of Freemasonry, which actually goes back to stonemasons. Okay? Stonemasons way back in Egyptians and before, but we're just going to go back as far as the Egyptians because that's, that's what's still prevalent today. Egypt still rules the world and not Egypt the country but ancient Egypt the pharaohs the whole anyway and uh, you know we'll, <laughs> all right so back to the course is what we have here is these men who have taken positions in masonry 
lifted it themselves in the ranks and then were able to be esteemed as high scholars and put out these works and in these works they mixed the religion or you know the ancient mysteries of the ancients mystery Babylon religion into the Freemasonry work and people nowadays don't know the difference they think it's all Freemasonry well I'm here I'm here to help you separate the wheats and the tares <laughs> okay for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear for those who don't okay you can regard I hope you'll further watch because I have some very important tons of information to cover for you in this episode so here we go back to this book here that we're reading in the tablet of Isis okay towards the end I was getting frustrated one thing that Manly P. Hall does is he takes an oddball group of quotes that are taken just you know a paragraph at a time here and there and then he'll mix them together in a particular order that seems like it's in no particular order but it is in a, actually a particular order to keep you jumping back and forth and in this section it just is so long and drawn out by the time we got to the end of it because he is taking all these different uh, and he mixes the good with the bad ones and he mixes them in a certain way and then he gets you going down this labyrinth maze and then also uh, Manly P. Hall himself he has a a uh, way of, of trying to use all the biggest words he could possibly dig up and he even creates a few of his own to try to make things sound more sophisticated and more you know uh, I don't even know the word for it but it's a, it's a writer it's the way a writer you know is, is it's a writer he's a writer <laughs> anyway in the middle uh, so this goes on and on and we read all this already into there was some I wanted to go back through, okay? Because there is, and that's one, another reason I started reading these originally too, is just to share the information. If you don't like my doc, it, you know, I have it on the screen as well. And I've said this in other videos in the past readings. And, you know, if you want to just read it for yourself, then uh, read it for yourself and turn the volume down. You don't have to listen to me. But, uh, below, you know, let's go on I wanted to read one good paragraph out of here if I can find it again um, you know he, he mixes all these different authors and then just takes little bitty snippets that he has specifically chosen out for purpose and then mix it with another snippet from another thing so throughout this whole thing this was pages long and um, he goes on through all kinds of different examples of different people's uh, ideas including quoting uh, like here's one Kutcher writes the throne denotes the diffusion in the triform supreme mind along the universal path of the three worlds out of these three intangible spheres emerges the sensible universe which Plutarch calls the house of thorns and the Egyptians the great gate of the gods the top of the throne is the midst of the diffused serpent shaped flames indicating that the supreme mind is filled with light life eternal and corruptible removed from all material contact how the supreme mind communicated his fire into the creatures clearly set forth in the symbolism of the table divine fires can okay so he keeps going with this okay and that's Kircher okay and then he'll go down here and um, here's some more Kircher but he 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 interrupts the Kircher with a Plato okay Plato believed that there are eternal forms of all possible things with the existence without matter and to these eternal and material forms he gave the I name of ideas in the platonic sense the ideas were the patterns according to it and so this is a quote by Sir W Hamilton of Plato thrown in the middle of two Kircher <laughs> 
Uh, and then the curvature goes on seven principal triads corresponding to seven superior worlds as shown in the central section of the table. They all originate from the fiery invisible archetype or archons, the triple crown of the throne. And the first, uh, uh, you know, and goes on, goes on, and goes on into all this crazy ass detail, okay, to basically get your little mind spinning and make this seem a whole lot more complicated than it really is. And that's what Manly P. Hall is really good at because then they, it made himself look all smarter and stuff back in the day especially. So then he goes down here and throws in the West Coast and then throws in this Zoroaster declared that the number three shines throughout the world. This is revealed in the Bim Bean tables by a series of tribes. So the, he'll throw in a whole nother guy's take on the thing. Okay, and in this chapter we have like five different people's uh, take on this thing including uh, and an oddball where is it it goes I'm looking for goddess takes precedence and the, you know goes on lower region table he quotes an Aristotle in here which an Aristotle quote that he uses um, he uses a lot of Kircher because Kircher is along with his purpose um and I had I had this quote last night. Maybe it's farther down. Two boys and seraphim Zarester Plato, okay. Um, goes on with some more Plato after that, the seven plus the one within itself called Fauna. See, this is actually the end of the Kircher. These seven plus the one invisible crown. This is where we left off. Page 60 in, in part 20. Plato writes that it is needful for the philosopher to know how the seven circles beneath the first one are arranged according to the Egyptians. Okay. In mixing these together, he tried, he basically, you know, is trying to correlate this author's findings with this author's findings with that author's findings and then he'll go down here and talks about Celis writes the Egyptians worshiped the tribe of faith truth and love and the seven foundations or fountains and the sun is the ruler the fountain of matter and then the fountain of the archangels and the fountain of senses the judgment and light so he goes on to say somebody else's take okay as if that has anything to do with the take before or Plato's take and the upper panel contains 12 figures of the zodiac arranged in four triads so he goes on Aquarius Let's see if I can find it I'm still looking for that one paragraph and this talks about more shown by the Egyptians as a globe issued the serpent the mind okay so it's different interpretations of different symbols according to different authors all mixed together which basically leads you with no answers, okay? A more profound interpretation is found in the correspondences between the twelve figures and the upper uh, furnishes a key to one of the most arcane of ancient secrets, the relationship existing between the two great zodiacs and the fixed and movable, this and that, okay? Um, poisonous in the lower, blah, 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 the table holds susceptible. All right, the table as a whole is susceptible of many interpretations. If the border of the table with its hieroglyphic figures can be accepted as a spiritual source, then the throne in the center represents the physical body with in which human nature is enthroned. From this point of view, the entire table becomes emblematic of the auric bodies of man, with the border as the outer extremity or shell of the auric egg. Okay, now people who have watched my helio fans will know exactly what we're talking about here. If the throne be accepted as the symbol of the spiritual sphere, the border typifies the elements, and the various panels surrounding the central one become emblematic of the worlds or planes emanating from the one divine source. If the table be considered from a purely physical basis, the throne becomes symbolic of the generative system, and the table reveals the secret processes of embryology <laughs> as applied to formation of the material worlds. Embro em embryo, uh, yeah, and uh, embryo, um, 
embryology there or something like that anyway if a purely physiological and anatomical uh, interpretation be desired the central throne becomes the heart the ibomorphous triad the mind the nephitian triad the generative system and the surrounding hieroglyphics the various parts and members of the human body from the evolutionary viewpoint the central gate becomes the point of both entrance and exit here also is set forth the process of initiation in which the candidate after passing successfully through the various ordeals is finally brought into the presence of his own soul which he alone is capable of unveiling. If cosmogony be the subject of consideration, the central panel represents the spiritual worlds, the upper panel the intellectual worlds, and the lower panel the material worlds. The central panel may also be symbolized by the nine invisible worlds, and the creature marked T in the physical nature, the footstool of Isis, and the spirit of universal life. Considered the light of alchemy, the central panel contains the metals and the borders of the alchemical processes. The figure seated on the throne is the universal mercury, the stone of the wise. The flaming canopy of the throne above is the divine sulfur. The cube of the earth beneath is the elemental salt. The three triads, or the paternal foundation, in the central panel represent the silent watchers, the three invisible parts of nature of man. The two panels on either side are the quaternary lower nature of man. In the central panel are 21 figures. This number is sacred to the sun, which consists of three great powers, each with seven attributes, and by Kabbalistic reduction, 21 becomes three, or the great triad. Okay, um, hold on here for a second. Was, all right, it will yet be proved that the table of Isis is directly connected with Egyptian Gnosticism. For in a Gnostic papyrus preserved in the Bodleian Library, there is a direct reference to the twelve fathers or paternities beneath whom are twelve fountains. See Egyptian magic by SSD, SSDD, and we will in just a moment. That the lower panel represents, because I already found that, I'm, I didn't know that quote was in here, but that, okay, that's good. It, it, because that helps me tie in what I was going to tie in anyway. <laughs> and he ties it in himself. See, that's why I'm using their material to do this. That the lower panel represents the underworld is greater emphasized by the two gates, and the great gate of the east and the great gate of the west. For in the Chaldean theology, the sun rises and sets through the gates in the underworld, where it wanders during the hours of the darkness, as Plato was for thirteen years under the instruction of Magi, Pathenia, Okops, uh, Sectophilus, you know, sorry I can't pronounce all these crazy words for you folks, but, uh, you know, you can pronounce them yourself. Edimon and Sabinitus, uh, some of them I get right, <laughs> is uh, physiology co consequently is permeated with the Chaldean, or philosophy, sorry, consequently permeated with the Chaldean and Egyptian system of triads. The Bimbine table is di diagrammatic exposition of the so-called Platonic philosophy, uh, or Platonic philosophy, uh, for it's in its design is epitomized the entire theory of mystic cosmogony and generation <clears throat> excuse me again the most valuable guide to the interpretation of this table is the com commentaries of Proclus on theology of Plato the Chaldean oracles of Zoroaster also contain many allusions to the theogenic principles which are demonstrated by the table Okay, and uh, yeah, that, that goes on with the Orphic egg, and and we're gonna get to that in a second here. We're gonna get back to that in a second. So right now we're gonna go over to one of these pages. Of many pages okay so he already connected it I was going to connect it here which is actually just another copy of the secret teachings um, in on online a different format and 
concerning the theurgic or magic sense in which the Egyptian priest exhibited in the Bimbine table of Isis it, the philosophy of sacrifice, rites, and ceremonies by a system of occult symbols. And or Athanasius Kircher writes, okay, now right there it says it all for the point actually of what this is all about and what I said. Freemasonry, original Freemasonry, a brotherhood that was started actually back before the Egyptians, but during the Egyptians, during the masonry building days, the stone masonry, it's just like unions of today. Say an iron workers union. Okay. The iron workers have certain trade secrets. If you're not in the union, if you're not working under an apprenticeship in that union, in that iron work, you're not going to know those secrets. You're not going to know the trade secrets. You're not going to know the steps to get to the different levels of apprenticeship to become a journeyman, to become a master iron worker, or whatever they call it in iron working. You know, the point is. Freemasonry has those steps as we went through in our earlier book readings. Okay. Those steps, before I get back to this, let me go on to this then. I didn't know it was going to go in this format, but I'm doing this. This isn't scripted. This is not scripted television, folks. <laughs> so, the history of Freemasonry, let's, let's skip that for a second. Let's go back to the true history of the Masonry period. And you can go as, you know, on here. This is a Google search and just put in Egyptian stone masonry okay and you can come up with all kinds of information that you want to if you want to research this is what we're going to look at is this piece right here by Dieter Arnold building in Egypt Fer Ferronic stone masonry New York and Oxford 1991 chapter 6 tools and their application it's for educational purposes only, etc., etc. Measuring rod. Okay, here we have the rods. The, the uh, ex Richard Lip Lipsius, after a few less important predecessors, and Petri were the first and last authors to study seriously the Egyptian cubit rod. Les Lipsius collected for ma information about 14 more or less cubit complete cubits. Most of these examples were not actually used as tool, but as votives were made for funerary equipment, therefore made of hard stone. Some, however, are wood material actually used for cubit rods by architects. Okay, and I'm going to try all these links that we're going to go over here. I'm going to leave these open and I'm going to put them all in the info box so people can come look at this information themselves. Just like, uh, you know, and, 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 uh, uh, in that format so you know and I'm not going to go into the details of it all but I mean there's the basics here's your cue your rod uh, measuring cords okay you have the rule you have the plum you have the square okay a plum a square and a square level from the tomb of Synagogium or whatever at Dier el Medineth Cairo okay and Builders, squares, Egyptian builders, and masons made use of simple wooden device square in order to lay off or check right angles in building as well as dressing blocks in principle the same instrument is used today. And uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so the original masonry brotherhood was like a union. And I've said it before in other videos I made, and, and it's true. All, you know, even though it's a religious saying or some shit you know all men are created equal suppose blah blah well that's not true all men are not created equal not only genetically but even in in spirit um and thus you have men that are more motivated and more you know central minded to certain aspects of life than others and this and that and thus brotherhoods were formed to preserve knowledge and to pass on knowledge just like I'm talking about with the iron workers union you go into apprenticeship you become a journeyman you go through years of training to learn all the tricks of the trade so to speak the same here that's what masonry and the Freemasonry was originally about even in the Middle Ages when Sinclair started uh, the Freemasonry back up again okay and in and, and different version form and 
course it cleared I'm not gonna you know his motivations were not evil I don't think they're saying I don't think they're necessarily an evil family I don't know they're you know I'm not gonna get into their bloodline and all that um, the the it was a form of control it was a, it was exactly what it is today okay a way of preserving certain knowledge okay and at the time in the middle ages when it was built I mean when it was reconstructed it was also a time of holding together what they considered as, as the standard of the day um, uh, you know civilized man or whatever uh, men of, of good standing etc that could get things done and they did they did get things done masons have built everything you freaking know masons have built everything you know okay every building in every city all these magnificent structures and architecture and everything in our modern society was created by masons this is a Masonic country. America was founded a Masonic country by Masons, for Masons. Okay, and this this is just fact. And and, and I'm not going to get into the history of that either, because I mean, I, I could get to go down so many dang tangents. But if you know, if you disagree with something I'm saying, that's fine. Disagree, and but make sure you're disagreeing on an educated purpose, so that you've done the research yourself. Because I tell you what, I've done it. I've, I've spent decades researching this stuff. Decades. I've put more time in to earn five PhDs. So I get really offended when hacks and trolls come on here and want to start picking apart what I'm doing and my knowledge and want to try to tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. I was trying to read the books as they are, and yes, I interject my own comments. You know what? But you know what? Like I was saying, how many different views, how many different uh, interpretations of the ISIS table does he include here? Five, six, seven authors just taking bits and pieces of their works and mixing them together the way he desires. Okay? So you think my little added commentary is just another opinion? It shouldn't offend you that much. Right? <laughs> anyway, back to this. This is the orig origin of Freemasonry. This is the foundations of Freemasonry. This is the history of original Freemasonry. Okay? Although these Masons were not free. That's why Freemasonry is different than the original Masonic or masonry lodges of the stone masons okay because that's where it originated now back to, we'll go to a history of Freemasonry and the modern history that we know started approximately and I'm gonna read this in just a second but then we're gonna go back to the further history of the nice Templar the whole you know real briefly because Original Freemasonry was Christian based in the Roman Catholic era. Okay? And it was control controlled and based and funded and founded all to serve the Vatican, basically. And groups like the Knights Templar, Knights of Malta, and these other groups uh, are all offshoots of that. And even back in the day, with the, before the Knights Templar, were, then the Vatican turned on them. You know, or so the story goes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <coughs> we know they survived. We know they escaped their persecution, or some of them did. Many of them got persecuted or whatever for their heresy. And you know, there's a history of of true heresy that was sneaking in even back then. Uh, Satan has never given up trying to infiltrate. Uh, um noble institutions which you know Freemasons that are listening that stuck with me so far Freemasonry was founded and is ultimately I mean at base a noble institution with good means okay or good intentions but uh, you know good intentions pave the path to hell uh, pave the road to hell they say but anyway 
um, the original core traditions of Freemasonry are not satanic. They are of noble origin and cause. Okay? And for the people that get into Freemasonry, this is a, a, a path. It's like a, you know, you have a path in your life. Well, then if you get into Masonry, then that becomes your life and your path. And then you still run into those forks in the road where you're going to have to choose. Okay? And what I have always stressed here, whether you're a churchianity Christian or a actual follower of Christ, either way, if you believe in Christ, you cannot stick with Freemasonry. It's just like... It's just like the true followers of Christ sticking with the fake churches, the apostate churches. Um, eventually, the Holy Spirit will bring you out of the church. And eventually, if you have the insight and knowledge, okay, of which the purpose of this channel is, knowledge. Uh, you know, when I say, when I name the channel Free Masonic Knowledge, a lot of people think that because it's spelled Free Masonic Knowledge. Yes, it is Freemasonic knowledge, as in for the Freemasonic knowledge. However, it is also free Masonic knowledge. Doesn't cost you a darn thing. Okay? You don't have to join their club. You don't have to become part of this collective. Okay? Part of the group. Okay? The hive. Okay? The infiltrated apostate lodges. Okay, we'll call them the apostate lodges now. Because they are all corrupted. Okay. And they're corrupted by people like Manly P. Hall. <laughs> so, um, and I kind of got into that in the beginning of the readings. You know, I said, I don't know if I want to start a big book like this. Especially from this author. I have about a 45 or so other books I could have read. and But I like to finish what I started. And there was obviously a purpose for me doing it. Um, or I wouldn't have started it in that moment that I had started it. So, let's read this real quick. The history of Freemasonry studies the development, evolution, and events of the fraternal organization known as Freemasonry. It covers three phases. Firstly, the emergence of organized lodges of operative Masons during the Middle Ages. Then, the admission of lay members as accepted or speculative Masons. And finally, the evolution of purely speculative lodges and the emergence of grand lodges to govern them. The watershed in this process is generally taken to be the formation of the first Grand Lodge in London, 1717. The two difficulties facing historians are the paucity of written material, the even down to the 19th century, and the misinformation generated by Masons and non-Masons alike from the earliest years. A complete history of Freemasonry is beyond the scope of a single article. This article traces the early development of Freemasonry from organized bodies of operative stonemasons to the modern system of speculative lodges organized round regional or national grand lodges. Notable events and developments of modern period are also briefly described. The history of specific subjects, rights, and jurisdictions within the general heading of Freemasonry are dealt with in detail elsewhere in their own articles. And that is... Yeah, I I had to go and find all this information I'm sharing with you today, out of out of what I knew what to look for, and I went to find it. But there's so much stuff out there you wouldn't believe. You know, it just like he says, you can't go through the whole history. But here's we're gonna go to some older history because I want to get to the oldest history that we can, and the oldest known Masonic text. The whoops, get my cursor off of. I don't really have to do that. I don't know it's a uh, the Halliwell manuscript or Rigius poem has a brief history of its introduction stating that the craft of masonry began with Euclid in Egypt and became came to England in the reign of King Athelstan and the Cook manuscript traces masonry to Jabal son of Lamech in Genesis 4 20 to 22 and tells us how this knowledge came to Euclid from him to the children of Israel while they were in Egypt dun, 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 and so on through the elaborate path to 
Athelstan, and most of the older texts contain a similar history. Shortly after the formation of the Premier Grant Lodge of England, James Anderson was commissioned to digest these Gothic constitutions in a palatable modern form. The resulting constitutions are prefaced by a history more extensive than any before, again tracing the history of what was now Freemasonry back to biblical roots, again forging Euclid into the chain. Okay, the 1737 lecture of Ch Chevalier Ramsay added the Crusaders to the lineage. William Preston's illustrations of Freemasonry, which we have that book and we will get to it once we get past this Manly P. Hall stuff, <laughs> enlarged and expanded the Masonic creation myth. The rational study uh, uh, of Masonic history started in Germany with George Moss in 1847. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm terrible with German. German, Russian, certain languages I just suck with, sorry. Anyway, in England, Ireland, and Scotland, Findel's history of Freemasonry was translated from German to English and published in 1865, the last quarter of the 19th century. The study of Masonic history matured under figures such as Woodford, Gold, um, Huhan in England, and Murray Lyon in Scotland, and Mackey in America. Modern Freemasonry employs the allegorical foundation myth and its ritual involving King Solomon's Temple and its chief architect, Hiram Abiff. Authors have sought to attribute his allegory, this allegory to actual historical events. The origin of Freemasonry has variously been attributed to King Solomon and the construction of the Temple in Jerusalem, Euclid or Pythagoras or Pythagoras, Moses or, and the Essenes. Uh, the Chaldees and the Druids, the Gypsies, or the Rosicrucians, not to mention the intellectual descendants of Noah. Okay, some of the more popular theories include Freemasonry being an offshoot of the ancient mystery schools. Okay, that's the uh, more popular theories, or that it is an institutional outgrowth of the medieval guilds of stonemasons, or that it is a direct descendant of the Knights Templar. Okay, Nice Templar is a descendant of Freemasonry, or is an offshoot of Freemasonry, as I said before. Um, the institutional outgrowth of the medieval guilds of stonemasons is where it comes from. The new popular theories, Freemasonry being an offshoot of the mystery schools, is the deception that I am purposely doing this channel to point out to you. Okay, The mystery schools are not Freemasonry. They have nothing to do with Freemasonry. They should have never been injected into the ancient tradition of Freemasonry. Okay? And if you're a true Freemason, you won't hate me for my channel and my exposing this deception. Okay? As you can see, the true origins of Freemasonry came from Egypt, okay, and Euclid, okay? Which then goes back even further. And I mean, actually, I mean, because all that came from Babylon. Okay, it goes back to the descendants of Noah, as it is briefly mentioned here. And it goes on to the, you know, um, the building of the Solomon Temple, etc., etc. All this is biblical, people. Okay? Biblical. All the history of Freemasonry is all in the Bible. And just like it says here, clear back to Genesis 4. Jabal son of Lamech okay it has nothing to do with the mystery schools these imposters that I talk about the Manly P. Halls the Albert Pikes that are actually Luciferians or Satanists if you prefer either way Luciferian doctrine is a whole doctrine and it's not Satanism it's it's a separate thing it is more truer to the truth of what Satanism is today uh, you actually have to go to the Luciferians are the true Satanists uh, because they're following an actual certain doctrine that was put out by an actual angelic being but anyway um, let us let us move on here this this is my point okay and 
so the uh, construction of the Roslyn Chapel in Scotland in 1440 and 1490 provided the interface between the Knights Templar and Freemasonry. Accordingly, the first degree and Mark Masonry was introduced by William Sinclair, the alleged first Grand Master and founder of Freemasonry. Okay, and the Sinclairs go way back, long before. Uh, you know, here's Freemasonry was created by Francis Bacon, Oliver Cromwell, Stuart. Uh, pretenders to the British crown. Uh, here's um, the French. There's also the French are involved in this too. Of course, everything. They, again, you can see my Heliophant uh, part 10, the Merovingians. Okay. Um, so, okay, I think that's basically all one. Origin of the term Freemasonry. Earliest official English to refer to the Latin or Norman French. Okay, thus we have Sculptores Lapidium Librorium, okay, in London in 1212, Magister Lathomus Librarium Paterium, and uh, in Oxford 1391, okay, and goes on 1351. So we see that Freemasonry and the stonemasonry and Freemasonry actually goes way back long before the revamped version of it in 1717 after the Middle Ages um, you know which was preceding or I mean not preceding but uh, post uh, the Dark Ages which was when a lot of knowledge was lost and destroyed and thus back then these fraternities and this brotherhood was a necessity to preserve the knowledge of stonemasonry and other knowledges such as astrology, cosmology, uh, and other things, okay? These were preserved through these groups and only through these groups because most of the world were savages. The peasants didn't know how to read or write, most of them, okay? And let alone comprehend and understand ancient knowledge that had been lost and recovered or passed on and see back in the Templar day that was it they went around and they recovered that's what they were doing they were not only you know there's the myths about uh, you know the or I won't say they're myths because they're not really myths they were there are two stories about the search for the Holy Grail the search for the spear the search for the ark and all these other things but it wasn't just that that's what you see in the public eye there was a lot more knowledge to be basically gathered back together the Vatican funded this Okay, the Vatican libraries, where all the knowledge, even the knowledge from uh, the great Alexandria and everything, everything that they could acquire at the same time they were running, you know, part of this period, the Crusades as well. Okay, it wasn't really, it's kind of like what we're doing nowadays. <laughs> In one respect, the Templars are still doing that to this day. Only nowadays they're going around, they're getting the ancient alien they're looking for even more ancient knowledge because they've already gone back. They've traced a lot of different knowledge. But anyway, I don't want to get off into too many tangents here. The point is, that's Freemasonry. The Secret Society of Freemason, that is the origin. Uh, the main carrier overs of the origin were Roman Catholic based. They were Christian. Okay? And that is the true history of Freemasonry not Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon has only been interjected since the revamping in 1717 and actually I think they did good for about a hundred years and it was in the 1800s when you started getting these authors that had risen to positions and then they carried on with their excuse me again for um, they carried on with their families, just like the, these, the Bushes and these politicians, the Clintons, these dynasties, these families that go way the frick back, that have passed on this knowledge and this lineage and this so-called right to rule. Uh, throughout the generations. So, back to this. Let's go. Here we're going to hit some Masonic sites themselves and get it straight from the, the horse's mouth. And of course here you have the same on the history of Freemasonry. This is the Masonic Services Association of N.A. be North America. And uh, this is a good site here. 
got all kinds of little things on it okay and you can like I said I'm gonna include these links I'm gonna keep these windows open while I post this this morning and uh, I'm not gonna read most of this let's see it goes through you know well I will read it here real quick like no one knows it certainly how or when the sonic fraternity was formed <laughs> I just told you uh, anyway, a widely accepted theory among Masonic Scots. See, they always try to keep it ambiguous, especially the Manly P. Halls. He mixes all that stuff, and we're going to get back to that in a minute once we finish this history lesson. Uh, widely accepted theory among Masonic scholars is that they rose from the stonemasons during the Middle Ages. The language and symbols used in fraternities and rituals come from this era. The oldest, and this is from the Masonic site, okay, and this is exactly what I just got done telling you. Um, basically, I mean, not exactly, but uh, the oldest document that makes reference to the Masons is the Regis poem, printed about 1390, which was a copy of an earlier work. In 1717, four lodges in London formed the first Grand Lodge of England, and records from that point on are more complete. Okay, and that was the Sinclair's doing. And like I said, at the time, Sinclair was a good man. He was not a Satanist, I don't believe. Okay, if he was a Satanist, he was still doing the right thing. See, a lot of times Satanists are working for God. They don't even know it. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. Um, okay, back to uh, this. So, he set up the lodges to preserve knowledge. Okay, uh, the remnants of the Templars, basically, is who these people are. The families, the generations of the persecuted ones back in the day when the church turned on their own basically after they were done using them for their means they got they used them to gather all the information into the Vatican libraries and stuff and then the other portion of the Vatican basically uh, took over and said ah but then again maybe some of the Templars were out of line and were doing had gone on to the other side and so maybe the persecution was justified this I don't know I did not live in that time in fact nobody today did that I know of so over the centuries Freemasonry has developed into a worldwide fraternity emphasizing personal study self-improvement and social betterment via individual involvement in philanthropy philanthropy and during the late 1700s is one of the organizations most responsible for spreading the ideas of enlightenment the dignity of man and the liberty of the individual the right of all persons to worship as they choose the formation of democratic governments and the importance of public education Mason supported the first public schools in both Europe and America during the 1800s early 1900s Freemasonry grew dramatically at that time the government had provided no social safety net the Masonic tradition of founding orphanages homes for widows and homes for age provided the only security many people knew today in North America the Masonic fraternity continues this tradition by giving almost 1.5 million each day to causes that range from operating children's hospitals providing treatment for childhood language disorders treating eye diseases funding medical research contributing local community service and providing care to Masons and their families in Masonic homes the four million Masons worldwide continue to help mill, uh, men and women face the problems of the 21st century by building bridges of brotherhood and instilling in the hearts of men ideas for a better tomorrow okay now this is from the Grand Lodge of Washington F and AM collection of short subjects from the Masonic Service Association about masonry history of masonry um, basically the same exact reading we just read organization it talks about uh, Freemasonry is the oldest fraternal organization for men in the world and it's an organized structure shows its age the basic organizational structure of the fraternity is the lodge we believe the term comes from the lodges or shelters constructed at the building sites of the cathedrals and castles during the Middle Ages that would be like the Union the Union workhouse you know Masons worked for and lived in these shelters each lodge is headed by an officer called the worshipful master worshipful means highly respected or honored which is actually what they should say 
honored or highly respected. Worshipful is actually a different word. Worshipping is completely different than being respected, being worshipped. But anyway, the term comes from the judicial system of England and carries no religious implication. Master means leader or best qualified as a concert master or master architect. And I want to interject another thing about the state and religion, okay, and atheists and believers, whether you're a follower of some religion or if you're a Gnostic like myself. Um, the law, okay, the judicial system of England, okay, which is the carry-on of the Roman Empire, Okay, saw it ever was. Okay, and they made the laws originally. Even for the laws that were based here in America when it was created by Masons, was all founded off of basic law and common law from the Brit, Brit what they knew. That's what they had already known and learned. That's where they came from. <laughs> Okay, so that's the foundations of all. It's based off of this law. The secret of law and common law is that it actually is totally related to deity belief or religion, if you will. Um, in the sense that to be a sovereign person, especially here in America, the way they founded it in America and the Constitution, Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence, the whole nine yards, it's all about founded on God, okay, being that God is the one who grants you your rights, okay, escaping from the ideology or ideology <laughs> um, that uh, the rulers, uh, the ones who had claimed to the right to rule, were the ones giving the people the rights, like dictators or monarchies, etc., of the day, at that, you know, back in that day. Okay, men wanted their own rights, they wanted to be free men. Okay, thus the term free Masonic, Masonic being builders, and not just builders of architecture or stone but builders of themselves enlightening men okay bringing themselves to enlightenment to knowledge and to higher levels of of sustainable uh, being existence and so <laughs> sorry I lost track for a second this was Oh yeah, okay, we were talking about law. Okay, the law that they created is based off of this. Okay, it's ba so basically, again, I got another message for the atheists, and I've said this in my other videos in my other channel. You have to understand when you're claiming, when, and this is why Satan is out there pushing the you're nothing but an animal. Okay, the whole theory of evolution by Darwin, the whole. Uh, non-creationist uh, evolution you're just an animal you came from an ape or whatever um, etc etc um, <laughs> or alien you know if you believe the aliens created you okay you think aliens are gods you know there's always the question who created them then you don't understand the you if you think aliens are gods you don't understand uh, the whole concept of creator because the creator created the aliens. I'm not arguing that there ain't aliens out there. I'm sure there's hundreds and thousands and billions and millions of civilizations out there in the grand architecture of our Lord. <laughs> I have no doubt. Um, but he created it all. That is the true Lord of this whole construct that you think is reality. The material world or the three third dimension. Um, anyway, I digress. The point is... Um, <laughs> the law is based off of that. The only way you're a sovereign being is when you get your rights from the Creator. Okay? Whatever, whatever you choose to call the Creator. Your religion is irrelevant in the matter of law. Okay? That is the separation, but that is the only separation. Okay? They don't care which deity you worship. Either way, 
Most of you don't even know that you claimed your sovereignty in a court of law. If you don't claim your sovereignty in the court of law, or if you choose to not believe in a deity, then you are automatically making the choice that you get your rights from the state. Therefore, you are nothing but a slave of the state. And they have designed their laws with this in mind, aimed specifically at you. Being you the ones who are ignorant enough to go down that path and give up your rights. Because that's what they have to get your agreement. That is part of the truth of how the world works. That's why all the deception and all the game playing. Because uh, the, the, the entities, the fallen ones, the whatever you want to call them that are controlling this place, they have certain rules that they have, been, uh, that they have to stick by. And um, anyway, so th that would take me down another path that I want to go down right now. But that's been explained in other videos I've made on my other channel and stuff. <coughs> Let's get back real quick to a our other pages in the Bimbing Isis table. Okay, so here we have the admittance of the occult symbols okay so in the history that I just described to you you see where the original Freemasonry was bound and the traditions of Freemasonry and anybody who's been through their first degrees of Freemasonry or even have tuned in for the first readings I read on this channel understand that one of the major rules of Freemasonry is that the tradition is not to be changed or manipulated Okay, yet they have allowed thus just such a thing to happen. And nowadays, in the 20th, 1st century, the new coming Masons don't know the difference. And this is an obstacle that they're going to undertake in their journey in the Lodge. And they're going to have to make choices of what they're going to believe and which paths they're going to go down and whether they're going to de be deceived if they want to rise to enlightenment in the spirit uh, under the uh, direction of the creator as Freemasonry was meant to be or if they want to take this left-handed path of so-called apotheosis thinking that they can achieve godhood themselves which is an illusion and a lie that has been infiltrated into Freemasonry by these infiltrators of mystery Babylon okay, such as our example here now this page, um, this goes on to talk about how Kircher, the earliest priest, believed that the great spiritual power is invoked by correct and unabridged sacrificial ceremonies. Okay, if one, since when does sacrificing ceremonies and uh, spiritual uh, to get your spiritual power come into free, true Freemasonry? It doesn't, and it has no business in there. That is the whole point of this channel. That is the whole point of what I am reviewing through all my readings. Okay, and especially the reading of Manly P. Hall here. That's why I'm so harsh during these readings on him. On his material. On the way he presents his material. And the path that he leads uh, his readers down. Uh, which is a really unnecessary path. Now let me see. This might be the page. No, that's uh, that's on down the road. Rongaro. Uh, okay, where did I? F oh. Okay, so uh, the ISIS tablet. And this is on a site called Ordo Astre. And um, These are uh, some books, the Montefacon. Uh, this is actually on uh, part of the. Uh, no, okay, I switched pages. That was a secret teaching. Now this is the, this uh, yeah. I wanted to read this. The brazen table of Bentley, because this, everything Pike was you know, long and drawn out. I mean not Pike, but Manly P. Hall was long and drawn out. What we just read. I'm going to summarize what this thing is for you in a quicker more understandable way okay and I've, I found the material to do that last night um, 
and this is part of it. The Bimba and Isaac table, or Isaac table, a brass and silver and enamel table, almost certainly the work of Egyptianizing Roman sculpture. Okay, it was, yeah. and and okay, I'm not going to interject that yet. Hold on, uh, sculpture was stolen at the ra at the sack of Rome in 1527. It came into the possession of the Renaissance scholar Pietro Bimbo after various bis bis uh, vicissitudes, vicissitudes, and travels. <laughs> <laughs> it came to rest in Turin's Museo Inzio, where it is today. See El Egito Du in Italian for a brief history of that. Um, and I'll include this link in there too in the information box for y'all. An article in Notes and Queries, uh, October 1868, may help to shed some light on its history. The celebrated altarpiece of Isis, which after so many vicissitudes is preserver, preserved, uh, preserved, yeah, preserved in the a Museum of Turin, has been the object of attention and investigation to several learned men, and the hieroglyphics by which it is covered have been minutely and variously in, uh, engraved in their several works. For Anus Vico of Parma, who I think was the first who gave his attention to the subject, it was engraved in full size. Pignorius was the next in his curious work. Uh, Verissimi tabulae in a hieroglyphics hoc est sacris uh, Egyptorium literis calete, uh, calete, uh, accurata explicano, or placiano. Sorry, my Latin's rusty. Um, anyway, th this I have not seen my own copy being in the second edition of the same work with a different title, which I transcribe. Characters, uh, Egypti hoc est sacrorium quibus Egypti untunur, or untuntur, Sacro, uh, simulcorum accurata I don't really need to read all that I know it's punishing your all's ears but it's all in Latin he translates it besides the engravings interspersed in the text this volume has 15 pages of engraved hieroglyphical representations and 43 leaves of explanatory letterpress the theory of Pignorius, who sees in the mystic figures merely the representation of the ceremonies of a sacrifice after the Egyptian rite, is advocated with equal brevity and learning, and is held to be the most simple and probable. And I agree. Okay, <laughs> and I'll prove I'll prove that he's right. Actually, here in a minute, his little work reached in the third edition, in which the title again underwent a change. It now appeared as. Mesa Isaac Asai Sacorum at Prud Egyptios Ratio Ectrosanacra Subjectus Stabilis Ininissimo Exhibitor et Explicenter Fortu Amsterdam 1969. <clears throat> Man, my throat's getting dry after all this yapping. <laughs> Alright, now yeah, I can hear the voices now out there saying, Yeah, a bunch of yapping, that's all you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> there's always going to be skeptics, and that's fine. Um, okay, so Egyptian right, he goes on to talk, and Mr. Uh, of Reverend Hartwell House says that it is the best edition of the most curious work. Pignorius is allowed to have succeeded best in deciphering the meaning of the mystic table of Isis. Okay, so I mean, you know, here's one paragraph tells you exactly what it is here we were reading the secret teachings you know and that's why I was getting so frustrated in reading it in part 20 okay because he goes on and on with a bunch of confusing ass crap that a lot of it isn't relevant and is what he's doing that for is he's trying to hide the fact of what the darn thing really is okay by making you think all these different paths look you can think of it this way 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 and he takes all these exponent all these different paragraphs out of bigger works and then mixes them together from different authors which just t just actually take you into a tailspin of misinformation okay one of these mis misinformation masons is who this guy is 
Okay, besides being a admitted, I mean, these guys, Albert Pike and them, they admitted they uh, were adorners of uh, works of Aleister Crowley and, and Madame Belasky. And, I mean, this is not a secret. Okay, so I, I get excited a little bit, I understand. Sorry if my voice raises and stuff in the mic. <clears throat> so, here, you know, we can go off. Um, it goes on. Talking about the new pantheon, the history that gives you different examples. Samuel Boise, William Cook. I mean, there's a lot of information. There's a lot of subjects out here. There is a lot of material other than people like Manly P. Hall and Halbert Pike. Why people want to lift these certain works of literature uh, from these certain people up and try to say, this is the esteemed work. This is what you need to refer to. No. Again, you have Lucifer misdirecting the public and misdirecting the information, misdirecting the lodges, and misdirecting the ignorant. Okay? Because that is not what Freemasonry is about. This stuff should have never been interjected into Freemasonry. Freemasonry is never about Mystery Babylon or discussing tables that uh, go through and describe uh, ceremonies of... Uh, sacrificial rites okay uh, these three uh, here are given the place identical in the engravings of de Bry in the work of Pignoris, uh, Pignoris. Uh, the explanation which accompanies it is prefaced by the statement that these are the f three following plates viz of Isis Osiris and Horus were taken originally from the Bimbin or Isaac table in the Bodleian uh, his, this table or altarpiece is of brass full of hieroglyphics inlaid in silver and enamel which constitute an epitome of the whole Egyptian theology. It has been described, copied, and elaborately explained by the learned Jesuit, okay, learned Jesuit Anathan, Athanasius Kircher, okay, he was a, a Jesuit people, I mean, come on, Understand? do you, you know anything? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Here, are, th that was for my, you know, the skeptics. I'm sorry. That any of my smarty, or you know, facetious comments I'm interjecting is not for my regular listeners, and and people that are, are you know, taking this seriously. It's for the people that attack me and that have been attacking me over these readings. Okay. And this is why the explanation is too, not just for you, but also for the people that are coming here. Because I want to be quite clear on on what's going on here, what I'm doing, and why I'm trying to do it. Because I don't want the people that the good people that are getting involved in masonry, just just like a, a soldier that joins the armed forces, thinking he's fighting for the good side, and goes over to Iraq or Afghanistan, killing innocents, etc., off a off off of purpose and basis of a lie okay these people are being used abused killed okay as far as the soldiers go and, and but i mean masonry is no di any other groups no different a church masonry if you get into this okay and you're a christian and you believe in christ or even if you just believe in what's right you don't have to believe in christ to not want to sacrifice and not want to get into mystic occult magic and dark magic okay so we're going to jump over here to Austria books okay the arts harmonic Kabbalah okay this is a book of source quoted not only in the secret teachings as I had just read see Egyptian magic by SSSDD okay um is also quoted in this other story as far as uh oh what was that yeah i think that's it anyway let's get back to here this is what it's connected to hermetic kabbalah the foundation in the art of magic okay um 20 diagrams includes the kabbalah etc 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 okay and it talks about the Isis tablet, of course, and the Ordo Astri, um, OO to the Order of Albert Line, or the Curriculum Grades, so that's the wrong thing, okay. So this is one of the books by Oliver St. John, or uh, 
also Alistair Cravel. So here we go, the ending of the word 666, magical philosophy of Alistair Crowley. Okay. Uh, ritual magic, rites and ceremony of hermetic light. Okay. Uh, there's Order of the Hermetic Dawn. I've, I've, I've shared these websites and other things before in other videos and other channel. And uh, the Journal of Hermetic Magic. Okay. So this was Ordo Astri, Table to Isis, Chief Jaw Complete, talks about the ritual, talks about this. Um, from Ritual Magic, The Rites and Ceremonies of Hermetic Light, Volume 6. Okay. The Oracle of Isis. Okay, which we actually already read. The Oracle of Isis in like part 19 of our reading in the secret teachings. Okay, when we were building up to this. Tradition teaches that the goddess Isis was instructed by Hermes or Thoth, the god of magic, writing and words, the magic power Isis promulgated, writing and learning, caused men to love women, and protectress of sailors and all vessels that sailed the seas. She provided law and justice, and instructed mankind in the sacred mysteries. In Isis, truth is made perfect and beautiful. An inscription from her, the temple of Sias, reads, I am Isis, I am all that is, as has been, and will be, and no mortal is ever... Uh, yet withdrawn my veil to the initiates of her mysteries she lifts her veils but they are to remain forever silent about what they have seen and uh, oops sorry I'm not remaining silent <laughs> in the western esoteric tradition it is considered that no ceremony or magical rite has power unless Isis is present for she is life and soul of nature hers is the power of magical voice and of enchantments and incantations it's like the wizard behind the curtain. Not supposed to look behind the curtain, right? It's just like the other things. If you actually, if you get to the real controllers, uh, nobody, you, you, you're not allowed to. Never mind. I don't want to go into that here. This is that's totally off topic and way too deep for um, this <clears throat> reading. So here we have it, and here it is where it's connected. And this is the magic. This is the. Uh, infiltration and um, if you think magic rituals sacrificing rituals or even contacting deities or the dead or doing any type of occult rituals whatsoever is a part of Freemasonry or is a part of the purpose of modern Freemasonry or even the purpose of the original Freemasonry of preserving the true knowledge of just ba everything from mundane knowledge to astrological knowledge, but either way, scientific knowledge, not mythios, okay, not uh, symbolo sim symbology of another Egyptian time of magic and ritual rites, okay, not pagan rites, okay, uh, none of these paths, all these are part of the left hand path. None of these paths will get you to apotheosis. For sure. Considering you're not going to get to apotheosis in this life. That's not what you're here for. You're not here to become a god. You're not here to learn how to become a god. Or even a demigod. <laughs> but you can achieve a certain level of enlightenment. You can also achieve spiritually other levels of of enlightenment and contact and connection with source connection with uh, what is known as the Akashic Records you can also through many different ways and uh, the Kabbalah actually plays in these ways with the chakras and on and on however it's a, it's not a sacrificial magic type of blood Kabbalah there's there's two different practices just like in everything there's positive there's the light and the dark the positive, negative, etc. Okay, but anyway, the point is uh, back to the point again. I'm going to try to wrap this up because it's probably been long enough for y'all, and I thank you for bearing with me. I needed to make this point. This is for all readers, new and old, um, to understand the purpose of what I'm doing, why 
I interject my comments to show you that my comments are not misgiven. Okay? I am not misdirecting you. I am trying to redirect you, especially if you are a Mason, back onto the correct path. Do not go down these left-handed paths, for they will lead you into confusion. They will lead you into the rabbit hole and down into the labyrinth, and they will leave you lost for I don't know how many years you may waste before you dig your way back out of that rabbit hole. If you follow these men like Albert Pike and Manly P. Hall. Okay? And I'm sure I'm going to mention others in the future. So be not surprised in the future readings. Uh, after this Manly P. Hall, we're going to get back into some more basic actual Freemasonry readings. Um, but I need to finish the book as I started it. And so with this, and I wanted to point out also... The history goes into the Sinclairs. If you go into the Sinclairs and back in the 1300s, the Vikings, the Templars, and the Goths, and anybody who knows about the other tablet, what is known, sometimes the Isis tablet is called the Easter tablet or the Ishtar tablet as, as well. Um, this is also confused with the Easter tablet, which is the tablets of Easter Island, also confused with this tablet, which is actually related to the Knights of Templar uh, and has the uh, Easter tablet as far as the translation codes runix see the tablets also there's a mathematical aspect to the Easter tablet or the Isis tablet but anyway um, I'm going to do a whole reading, whole other book on this. This is just be a preview of the secret Templar code embedded in the Kensington rune stone. Okay, and believe it or not, these runes and this as a as a connection back to the Easter tablet. Um, and like I said, I'm going to do a whole special reading on that. We'll make some connections with the Templars, the actual land claim. That's what it was. Um, it was a, a certain group, and um, whether they brought stuff here to hide or stuff, you know, we'll get into that too. I know uh, a lot of you probably have already heard, maybe even seen on like History Channel, uh, the shows that they've done on the Kensington Runestone and other things. Um, one more thing I did want to get into. Oh, well, we'll, we'll save this. This is actually uh, the descendants of Nicholas, Peter, and James Noyce. Okay, landed in Parker River, Mass, 1634 on the ship Mary and John. Um, it's a pilgrim ship. Uh, these were some of the comer-overs of the Knights and Templar. Okay, and even when Christopher, Christopher Columbus, even though taught in our schools to the to the layman that he was the discoverer of America and all this, he was not the discoverer of America. He was the uh, ambassador who they sent, uh, who uh, the the crown sent to claim America officially in sight and view of the current monarchy. Um, it was all secretly done way before that. Um, not only had the Templars been here, but the Spanish had been here too. The Spanish had been all over this continent. And that's another part of history. But anyway, um, this gets in, this is actually, um, you know, Christopher Columbus flew this, the flag of England or of St. George, which is also at the time and, and now today the Templar flag. Templar symbol, um, and you know we're we're gonna get into this. We're gonna read about it, and this is uh, uh, right here, President Benjamin Harrison, uh, ninth president and signer of the Declaration of Independence. He's a descendant. There's a noise home photo. Um, you know these people hold their lineage close to them. They hold their histories close to them. They hold it in their families. That's why you have the Ivy Leaguers. That's why you have the uh, aristocracy or the elites. Okay, because these people have carried on traditions and traditions and traditions. Um, here's the Easter Island tablets. 
uh, the Rongaro, and it's actually separate separate um, from the Isis tablets and other things. Um, but it is a curiosity and uh, kind of related in a way. Uh, but we'll get into that too in another video. I'm going to make whole special videos on that. I'm just giving you a quick preview here. And dun, dun, dun. make sure I went over everything here. Oh, I wanted to show you a couple more things. Masonic. And I'll include these links in the thing for informational purposes for Masons and whoever. We have this website as Masonic Dates. It's a good record of different things like uh, January 2nd on this date, 1901, U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt received, received his first degree in Manticoc Lodge, number 806 in Oyster Bay, New York. This has a uh, list of dates of history of all, uh, all kinds of great stuff. I mean, as far as information-wise. Uh, on this date, 1909, Harry S. Truman received his first degree in the Belton Lodge, Fort Neal. So it's just a historical record and historical reference. Uh, February 23rd, uh, on this date, 1887, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle received his second degree. I mean, for Mason, this is an awesome resource. I mean, for anybody who's into researching, but if, especially for you Masons, if, if there's any Masons still listening to me. <laughs> And here's another one. The sky. I mean, I mean, you know, if you want to be true to the tradition of masonry, and Freemasonry, and hold true to the tradition of what's right, okay, then you'll not be offended by anything I pointed out. In fact, for those who didn't know, you'll be thankful that I pointed this information out to you and separated the wheats and the tares for you, so that in your future, in your own future. Uh, path and journey and research and learning that you, you'll you already have at least one step up and you won't have to figure these simple little things out for yourself and I say simple little things because now they are simple when they've been separated but when you're first getting into this and you don't know anything about anything and you go to read and you're thinking okay this is esteemed master Manly P. Hall who's divulging all this wisdom and knowledge unto us. Great brother. Don't call that man your brother. He is not a brother of any true Mason. He was a deceiver amongst you. So with that, I thank you for joining me. I'm going to include this link here too. Scottish Rite, Masonic Museum and Library, Inc. The National Heritage Museum. You can go in here again and find all kinds of lodge and Masonic related information showing the seeds of liberty all kinds of great articles uh, each article programs lectures all kinds of things here's the National Heritage Museum it is in Lexington Massachusetts American History Museum founded and supported by the Scottish Rite Freemasons in the Northern Masonic jurisdiction okay join us and become a member and uh, do if you're on the right path I have no problem with masonry or Freemasonry myself and in, in fact because I'm trying to do a good thing for y'all I'm obviously uh, I, you know, I'm not a mason never been a mason and I wouldn't join a lodge because I'm not a group person okay <laughs> but I, I am I am all for the betterment of our society and our our species as a whole and with that, I will go ahead and finally end this. And I do thank you for joining me. And Lord bless you all. And we will come back with our next reading will be actually part 21. And we're going to go, since I've already covered and told you what the ISIS table is. Okay, and even though, and I seem to have lost a page. There was a page that actually went into man I hate it that I lost that page somewhere it was a hermetic and it actually went into detail about the Isis table and the depiction of sacrificial uh, 
that we read earlier and I it was actually a magic page and went on to talk about the magic of the Isis table and the uh, Isis tablet I mean and I had somewhere shut somewhere that page got shut down but you can look it up yourself I already gave you I read it earlier here and uh, here erase all that stuff so when we come back we will start with the page 61 wonders of antiquity will be the 21st part or yeah 20 yeah, right yeah <laughs> all right good night folks